There's so many hair loss supplements on the market that claim to help regrow hair and improve hair thinning, but do they actually work? And as a board certified dermatologist, are there ones that I actually recommend over others? Well, you've come to the right place because today we're gonna to take a deeper dive on this topic. Hi, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you enjoy learning more about hair care and skincare content, you've come to the right place. And if you are struggling with hair loss and really want to improve your your hair thinning, then this is the video that you must watch. So the hair loss market is huge and continues to expand, if not already one of the fastest growing industries out there in the beauty space. And when it comes to supplements for helping with hair growth, I certainly understand the appeal. You know, if there was a supplement out there that can possibly improve hair growth, gosh, I am totally on board too, right? That sounds amazing. And two, I also understand that for many individuals who don't have access to a dermatologist, they may not be able to get on prescription treatments or just don't want to be on prescription medications because of the known side effects. However, when it comes to supplements in general, which we also use interchangeably with the terminology called nutraceuticals, basically vitamins, mineral supplements that have purported health benefits, these supplements unfortunately lack rigorous clinical studies and evidence, especially when compared to the amount of studies prescription medications are subjected to. So that's number one. Number two, yes, supplements are regulated by the FDA. There are certain safety testing that has to be demonstrated, but unfortunately, the level of rigorous testing as well as monitoring is really, really low compared to prescription treatments. And I find that, you know, for the general public, often natural or vitamins often translate to, oh, I can take this safely and it doesn't have side effects. And unfortunately, that is just not true. I've seen undesired side effects from supplements and in you know, there is one now we know about as dermatologists that we are trying to really educate the general public on. You know, biotin is one that we as dermatologists in the distant past used to recommend for hair growth. But now over the years, as more studies have shown that not only does it not help, it can actually interact with medications, cause undesired side effects, and Three, interact with lab testing like cardiac, thyroid testing, as well as pregnancy tests. So just because they're vitamins or say naturally derived from plant extracts, it doesn't mean that they come without side effects. So you guys, the take home message is there are a ton of products on the market that claim to help with hair growth, but only very limited few have demonstrated clinical evidence in helping. And two, more importantly is regardless of what you end up using, if you use anything at all, you should never rely on oral supplements alone to help with hair regrowth. Certainly, it may be helpful as part of your overall hair loss regimen, but don't expect really significant improvement if hair loss supplement is the only thing that you take or do for your hair loss. Lastly, remember most of these supplements have really been studied for treatment of angiogenetic hair loss, which is the most common type of hair thinning, and some of that efficacy may translate into helping with telogen influvium or stress-related hair thinning. However, you know, there's so many different causes of hair loss, including including medical conditions that can lead to what we call scarring or permanent hair loss. So even though I'm making this video to kind of help you guys navigate between supplements, hair loss is so nuanced where if you are experiencing hair thinning pretty aggressively and you're noticing changes with your scalp, you really should see a dermatologist to have the proper workup and diagnosis. And your dermatologist will probably even talk to you about supplements if that is something you're curious about to really figure out what makes sense for you and find a hair loss treatment regimen that works for you and your budget. Okay, enough said, let's talk about what are evidence-based hair loss supplements that exist on the market. So of all the vitamins and supplements on the market, Amino Mar Complex as well as Synergen Complex have the best level of evidence and clinical studies supporting their efficacy. And these two are found in Viviscal and Nutrafol respectively. And so that is really what I recommend as a dermatologist. And I do find a trend when I go to national meetings, these are kind of the two that I find, I, that I hear over and over again that are used and recommended by my dermatology colleagues as well. So let's take a deeper dive on Viviscal and Nutrafol. All right, so let's start with Viviscal. Viviscal contains that trademark amino marmarine complex. And as the name applies, is 
derived from marine complexes, namely shark and mollusk powder. In addition to the marine complex, it also contains a blend of various vitamins, macro, micronutrients, plant-derived extracts, and amino acids. So some of the ingredients you can find in their supplements, including vitamin C, iron, calcium, zinc, it does contain biotin, uh, amino acids, uh, various other B vitamins, as well as plant-derived extracts like millet seed extract, horsetail stem extract, and so on. Viviscal does have a few double-blinded randomized control studies demonstrating efficacy, especially for androgenic hair loss. And interestingly, as a side note, what they noted when studying the hair loss was that individuals taking Viviscal had a noted improvement in the overall health and strength of their nail, as well as fuller eyebrows and improvement in skin hydration. So certainly they weren't looking for that, but it was just noted in the individuals in the studies um, when they were um, studying it for hair loss. Now, one thing to be careful of is that Viviscal does contain biotin. And so if you end up taking Viviscal for hair thinning, you want to notify your providers if you ever undergo testing, specifically like cardiac and thyroid testing, because it can interfere with those labs. So it's just one of those things that you want to take a mental note note of and inform your providers if it's relevant. Viviscal comes in a separate formulation, one for men and one for women. And they do have a separate hair care line, which I actually have not tried myself personally. Viviscal is roughly about $40 a month. Now, Nutrafol launched in 2016. I don't quite remember how long Viviscal has been around, but I want to say longer than Nutrafol. But in my mind, I feel like Nutrafol has gained popularity much quickly over the past few years amongst consumers and dermatologists alike. Now, Nutrafol contains 21 ingredients that make up their trademark Synergen complex. Basically, essentially, it's a blend of phytoactives, so plant-derived ingredients that have anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, stress adaptogens, as well as dihydrotestosterone inhibiting effects. Some of the ingredients you can find within their complex includes curcumin, so the main phytoactive from turmeric, ashwagandha, salt palmetto, to name a few. Nutrafol also contains amino acids, marine collagen, hyaluronic acid, organic kelp, uh, as well as a few other vitamins and minerals that all make up those 21 ingredients that is part of that synergen complex. So really, in my mind, you know, Nutrafol can help really those who are undergoing, you know, a lot of stress-related hair loss and certainly has been mostly studied in the context of improving androgenic hair thinning. But here, because of all of those antioxidants and adaptogens, it could possibly improve stress-related hair thinning like telogen effluvium. And interestingly, Nutrafol does have four different lines. So Nutrafol Women, Nutrafol Women's Balance, which I believe is for postmenopausal women, Nutrafol Postpartum, as well as Nutrafol Men, which just has a slightly higher level of sal palmetto. Nutrafol is more expensive. It's about $80 per month compared to Viviscal. Nutrafol did recently come out with a hair care line consisting of hair mask, shampoo, conditioner, as well as I think a scalp serum. And I actually did receive a PR package and some samples when I was at a recent academy meeting and I really have been enjoying their hair care line. I have not tried their supplements, nor have I actually taken Viviscal, but I have tried Nutrafol's hair care line, which actually I am really enjoying. So that is a quick breakdown and comparison between Viviscal and Nutrafol. Again, both supplements have really been mostly studied for improving androgenetic hair loss. I do personally feel with Nutrafol though, their ingredients, their phytoactives and adaptogens, it may be helpful for supporting hair growth in stress-related situations. So telogen fluvium after pregnancy, surgery, major illnesses, or COVID. I personally have not tried these supplements. So what I'm about to tell you are really feedback that I've gotten from my patients or what I hear from my dermatology colleagues and the feedback from their patients. And that is in general, Nutrafol tends to work a little bit better especially in the patients that have tried both. It is unfortunately more expensive. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that supplements do have side effects. If Especially if you are a nursing mom, you want to first and foremost make sure that these supplements can be safely taken. So the best thing is to discuss with your provider. However, Nutrafol does have a postpartum line that per their website is safe to take during lactation. But that is always something that you want to keep in mind when you are taking any supplements postpartum. Lastly, keep in mind, depending on the type of hair loss you're addressing, this can 
get pretty expensive, right? Especially for angiogenetic hair loss, where we know there is no cure and it is a chronic condition that needs to be addressed if you choose to treat it. And so this can end up being pretty expensive. So how I tend to incorporate these oral supplements into the hair loss regimen is first and foremost, when I come, when a patient comes to see me in clinic, I do a thorough history. I look at their scalp, their hair, and I also make sure that they are not deficient in certain vitamins and nutrients or hormones that may play a role like vitamin D, zinc, iron, as well as thyroid, you know, making sure that there isn't an underlying scalp condition that is contributing or at least partially contributing if not fully contributing to their hair loss making sure that that is properly addressed but say if it's just the common androgenetic hair loss or even telogen fluvium I often will talk to my patients first and foremost about topical minoxidil oral minoxidil, you know, oral finasteride, spironolactone. And if that is something they're interested in, you know, I will start them on it. Now, supplements can certainly be a good complement or adjunct to that, assuming there's no interaction. And for the most part, these have not been shown to interact with prescription medications for treating hair loss. So if that is something patients bring up themselves, I recommend these two. And can we talk through the pros and cons of each supplement? But certainly like if you are not able to see dermatologist or you have the diagnosis of telogen fluvium or androgenetic hair loss, you are on minoxidil, you are, you are trying low level laser therapy and you want to add in something extra, these supplements could potentially give you something extra to boost and support your hair growth journey. But like I said, these should never be used alone and often the results are really best when combined with other treatment modalities. All right guys, so that is my little spiel on oral supplements for hair loss and really the two that I recommend as a dermatologist. I mean, let me know what you think in the comments below or if you want me to review Nutrafol's new hair care line, which is really the one that I've been trying lately. Let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to do a video on that as well. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye.